is. So it's looking for a needle in a haystack, as sometimes we say. And as I already mentioned, we are looking for this rare, uh, or with the, we're looking at this mystery of dark matter in, with these three uh, probes I already mentioned, so maybe I go faster here. We have the production of new particles like collider. We have the observation, let's say, of anti-particles uh, or uh, photons or neutrino from the annihilation of dark matter. And we have this method of direct scattering. We wait for a dark matter, maybe it's more clear on the next picture, as it scatters off normal matter, it comes in, it goes out, and as a result of this interaction, which is shown more here, so we have a particle which hits the nucleus of a, an atom of a normal matter. As this scattering occurs, what happens is that you, you give some energy to this nucleus. This nucleus moves just a tiny bit, and it's the energy which is imparted to this nucleus that we are trying to measure. It's this tiny energy which the nucleus gets as, as a kick from this collision of a dark matter particle with it. This is our, this is what we're trying to measure to detect in a detector on Earth. Okay, it's an elastic scattering. So, measure the energy released in an elastic collision of a WIMP with a nucleus, and we use ultra-sensitive, of course, because we're looking for very rare events, so there are not so many occurrences. We're looking very deep underground, and I'll tell you why we go, actually, not for fun, that we go under the mountains or in a mine uh, somewhere. We do that because of this, because the challenge to do this direct detection of dark matter, first of all, the energy is very small, you can calculate, we have all the tools to calculate the energy which we expect to be released in one of these collisions, and when you calculate for as many typical materials that you can use in a detector for many nuclei, you calculate that the energy is really in a, a handful of keV, kilo electron volt, a very small energy tiny, tiny compared to the huge energy of an LHC. We're looking for very tiny amount of energy which makes it difficult to detect. So uh, we also said that it's an extremely rare event, only a few events per ton, per thousands of, per thousand kilogram per year. So that makes it, even if you put several thousands of kilogram of detector material together, you would expect at the level where we are today, only a few events after you wait a year of time and you keep measuring and waiting. So it's a very tedious, or it's a very, you need detectors which must be very massive to begin with and which also have to have long-term stability because you're going to run for a long time. You are not going to be happy with one year and just one event or two events. You want to accumulate enough statistics, as we say, so we want to run for a long time. But the, the holy grail of this business is actually the background. This event is very rare, and no matter of what we do to build these experiments, very low in radioactivity, namely that they are not noisy, and we go underground, we go in places where the the, the background from radiation, such as the cosmic radiation that we have, again, all around us, hitting us, we go underground because the rate of cosmic rays, which bombard us here, goes down with depth, as far down we go towards the center, uh, down in the Earth. So we go and operate this detector deep underground, as we say, to shield our experiments from the radiation which comes from cosmic rays. But we also further shield this detector. I'll show you an example with our experiment. And our challenge, other than going underground and operate in these mines or in these underground laboratories, uh, is the main challenge that we have as physicists when we build a detector is to choose the lowest radioactivity materials that we can find. And that is an example that I'll come to it when I show you a piece of our experiment, which is actually quite, uh, quite challenging, I'll tell you a bit later. And the last thing is that, of course, we want to have detectors, we want to be as inventive as possible to have detectors which can tell us more clearly a signal over a background. This is very important. 
and I'll show you in the next picture we are lucky in the sense that a wimp or a particle dark matter will actually scatter more typically with the nucleons with the nucleus of an atom, right? Whereas typical background or gamma rays from radioactivity, from the potassium that we have in many materials, the cobalt in steel, those gamma rays and other particles scatter off the atomic electrons. And so if you have detectors which are able to distinguish scattering off electrons from scattering off nuclei, we have an edge or we have a, an additional tool to identify a signal from dark matter and from background. And this is maybe too detailed, so around the world there are many technologies that people are using in this field of direct detection now I'm talking. But maybe the message you want to carry is that whenever a, a WIMP Whenever a particle interacts with, met with normal matter, an atom here, uh, and scatters off, the, the, the outcome of this interaction is the production of typically ionization, the production of, of charge carriers, is the production of light, scintillation we say, and the vibration of the lattice of the crystals, if you're using a crystal structure. So you have other, as we say in physics, we have other uh, heat, vibration of the lattice phonons, or you have charges, electrons, or you have gamma rays, scintillation photons.